Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph, and I am quarantined myself. Uh, there are many other places in the city of Missoula that are quarantined themselves this uh, for the last couple weeks, for sure. So I'm going to be talking about a whole bunch of different items, topics, and other things that are happening within the city of Missoula. I have a couple fun videos I want to show you guys, but we're going to get right into it because now I'm going to kick things off with, with the current state of what uh, the state of Montana uh, with uh, more than uh, 225 confirmed cases of COVID-19, otherwise known as the coronavirus, um, started. Um, the Montana response COVID tracking map shows that there are 227 confirmed cases as of Thursday morning. Of course, uh, I'm doing this show a little bit uh, different time. Um, I'm pre-taping it, pre-recording, doing all the stuff beforehand, and it'll be showing live on Friday if you're watching this on MCAT 189. Um, so far, you know, Flathead has two, Gallatin has three. Uh, these are the new cases, but the total confirmed cases is that Gallatin County, Bozeman, Big Sky Resort, Ski Area, um, has 85 confirmed cases of COVID. Yellowstone has Yellowstone County has 34, that's in Billings. Um, Missoula County has 16, with the Flathead up upwards of 17. Uh, the President of the United States, Donald Trump, declared a major disaster um, uh, declaration for the state of Montana so they can uh, have some relief fund to help uh, with the testing because one of the things that Steve Bullock said earlier this week particularly was that we were running out of uh, COVID testing kits and we would be completely out of it by like Tuesday so it is Thursday now and uh, uh, in this time uh, where uh, Trump officially uh, declared Montana uh, a disaster in terms of COVID. Uh, so this includes federal assistance for all areas of the state of Montana impacting uh, coronavirus. Uh, the Pete Gaynor, an administrator of Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, a de Department of Homeland Security, also has uh, have uh, for federal recovery operations in the affected areas. So money, uh, officials, and folks will be coming down and helping uh, Montana out a little bit more on that as well. So let's talk a little bit more locally. Um, the school system has closed their doors. That includes uh, public playgrounds. So one of the things that they wanted to say is that the uh, MCPS schools within the Missoula area have closed the playgrounds to the public until further notice. They need to take this step in alignment with the closing of the city of Missoula parks to keep the community safe and reduce the risk of transmitting COVID-19. Uh, Parks and Recreation Department also have closed their uh, shops up it as well. Um, if you have a, a kid with the MCPS school system, uh, they tell you to go onto the website mcpsmt.org for more information about this. Uh, they want you to know that um, they're delivering meals to the kids. Around 11, 11.05, uh, the beach transportation has taken upon themselves to travel to each of their uh, pickup spots where they pick up the kids so they could provide meals. And they give brown bags, different types of meals and lunches. I've seen a couple of them, a couple milks, apple juice, you know, a carrots, just a, a, a small lunch for uh, the Missoula um, area kids. And if your kid doesn't go to the same district as MCPS, there are also many opportunities within the Missoula Food Bank and other, uh, and other areas as well, where which are doing um, kind of uh, food for kids and families alike. Um, so you can guys can check that out. You can go to MissoulaFoodBank.org for more information on that. Uh, but that's basically kind of what's happening within the city of Missoula. Of course, if you haven't already seen, Wednesday of this week is that we had a whole bunch of snow that's been... Uh, falling down. It kind of feels like every other day it's snowed since the, everyone's been kind of locked inside. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, how you guys can stay safe and uh, not go crazy, basically. So uh, here's a couple new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. And when I come back, I'm going to be talking about some things that are happening, um, just what you guys can do to uh, keep yourself occupied and therefore and stuff. Okay, so I'll be right back right after this. Uh, you have the word male in the Constitution. And again, that's really interesting, right? Because before, all men are created equal. Supposedly, that's generic. Feminists are pointing out, suffragists are pointing out that it's not really. With this amendment, we have the word male in the Constitution. People like Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony are angry. And they start the National Women's Suffrage Association, which is far more radical than the American Women's Suffrage Association, which is associated with people like Lucy Stone, um, who do, in fact, try to you know, work more closely with men and support, some of them anyway, support the um, uh, votes, uh, votes for, for African-American men. Yeah. But it gets really complicated and ugly. 
you get a lot of racist language, unfortunately, from suffragists coming after the Civil War. Um, but with computers, I think um, one, one thing that we, I see as a strength we can offer out is just my computer background, uh, at least for helping with it for a while. Now, um, if we can't get a way to help uh, bring money into the region and c maintain the computers, that can be an issue. But um, at this point, we're trying to just get a few computers to see if, like one in each school. He's also trying to get books for the schools because that's something they don't have a lot of. So that's another strong, and that one I think is a little easier. The technology um, is largely just when it's really needed for a student with a disability, but that will always have to be accompanied with somehow getting the solar type of power to be able to do that. So that we have tens of thousands of people living in a fairly small valley where the air frequently in wintertime does not move. You have a lid on that maybe 30 feet high or 100 feet high. Um, if you put several hundred wood stoves or a few thousand more wood stoves, even clean burning ones, will that cause an exceed of the national ambient air quality standards? People's health are affected by that. It causes, it, people with asthma, infants are really affected for the rest of their lives potentially if they live in a high pollution area. <music>
Graham, do you want to explain the rules of Jenga no, for it's... all the people at home who have never played this rare and fascinating game? Yeah, so all you have to do is uh, stack wood on top of each other and make sure it doesn't fall. Okay, I like those rules. Yeah. Now we're all gonna play rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first. And then okay, we'll go, hands off table. And then we'll go clockwise. Okay, you ready? Try not to lean on the table either. If you want to lean back, just lean back. You ready? Okay. Okay, I'll shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Wow. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. Ah. Oh, all right. Yeah. So let's go clockwise. See so you guys. Oh! What are you doing? I was trying to get the center one, but... There's no... The center one's on the third the row up. Center one. Both the centers are clear. Yeah. From the bottom two the rows. Else. That looks too easy. Oh, Jesus. Why do you go center again? Because Jesus. it's a safe move, usually. Yeah. But sometimes it pushes the whole entire thing. <laughs> Yahtzee! Right. You know, like they say in Little League, home base. <laughs> I just go, ah! <laughs> what are you doing? Sorry, I watch, just I watch your to... breathing. <gasps> oh! I don't see it. <laughs> Perfect. Oh my god. Oh, from your angle, it's terrible. Oh my god. <laughs> sure, I'm yeah, it, this doesn't look like I'm done. anything for you guys. <laughs> I think I'm done here. Uh, no, you're gonna want to take out that one very carefully. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, well, let's talk some city council. So one of the big things that are happening within the, within the city of Missoula is that uh, the city is still doing stuff. Yes, they have to keep paying the bills, they have to pay, pay claims, and claims are what the city has to pay every single week in installments, so they can keep the lights on downtown, they can keep uh, the buildings running electricity, heating, and all that stuff. A big chunk of a lot of the power that's being used within the city of Missoula is the heating costs, and also you know air conditioning, electricity, and stuff like that. So the mayor answered questions last week about people paying tickets downtown parking. Uh, they said that all their operations are still working. Uh, there were a couple comments saying that it would be easier for the city of Missoula to uh, alleviate uh, some of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the deal for uh, parking. Uh, the mayor said he wants to keep the city running and as normal as possible, which includes the parking commission. So if you guys are planning on parking downtown, you have to be aware that uh, they will still be charged for parking. So go to the kiosk and pay for your parking. Uh, they still got to keep the, uh, the city running. Uh, there's a lot of jobs that are still open. Uh, the, the county of Missoula, kind of uh, on the first week of uh, the COVID epidemic during spring break, decided uh, within the city of Missoula to close a lot of the bars. So a lot of the bars were closed. Um, they... Uh, they all decided to be like, hey, we're going to take a proactive approach on this. And then the week after, that's when uh, Steve Bullock put the mandate. Uh, this was probably, I wouldn't say, the 26th of uh, of March. is, And that's when uh, Governor Steve Bullock pretty much put down the hammer and says that there's absolutely no way we're going to leave these places open. Then the next day, he's just like, okay, you can um, you can take out. So it's, it's definitely possible for you guys to be able to go to a liquor store and take take out the liquor, but you can't go to a bar. So that was kind of the, one of the consensuses behind that with the state, uh, the city of Missoula. They still have a lot of their service industry jobs that are open. Uh, restaurants are doing takeout. And uh, we're talking a little bit more about that with more of the city council stuff as well. So um, I also have one of the latest uh, updates of uh, from the city of Missoula. So this is from Thursday, um, um, April 2nd. Um, the city of Missoula kind of uh, came, uh, the city and the county uh, have been giving uh, updates. Uh, Dave Strohmeyer gave it on Wednesday. Uh, today we're talking with a couple people. I don't know exactly what it is yet, so I'm going to show you guys that, um, what you're going to see right now. Um, but right now I don't know what I'm going to be showing you. Hi, my name is Cindy Farr and I'm the Incident Commander for the Missoula City County Health Department's COVID-19 response. Today is Thursday, April 2nd, and this is my daily briefing. Right now in Missoula, we are now up to 17 cases. That's up three from yesterday, and there are 227 cases in the state of Montana. People who are close contacts to a COVID-19 case and those who have traveled outside of Montana are asked to quarantine because they were likely exposed to COVID-19 and could develop symptoms of the illness. And once you develop symptoms, then you can spread the illness. So if you were asked to quarantine, we need you to stay home for the full 14 days um, of the incubation period. First, if you don't have any symptoms, you don't need to get tested. Um, as we've discussed several times, that's just not the way that the test works. Um, you have to actually be having symptoms in order for the test to be accurate. Um, testing supplies are still limited. So if you don't have symptoms and you ask for a test, you're taking a limited resource away from someone who needs it. It's really important for people to continue to follow the stay at home order and follow any quarantine or isolation procedures if you're asked to do so by either a healthcare provider or by our nurses here at the health department. The quarantine order of you have to be quarantined for 14 days if you travel from outside the state still stands. So you still have to stay home for those two weeks or if you're here um, staying in a hotel or Airbnb or other short-term stay facility, you have to stay there for those two weeks. And again, I just want to say that I can't stress enough how important it is that everyone follow the guidelines that have been put out and stay home under that stay at home order. And um, we are all in this together. And the only way that we can slow the spread is for all of us to follow the, the same guidance. So that's it for my daily briefing today. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, be sure to click the little bell to receive notifications when a new video gets posted. You can follow us on Facebook. Just search the Missoula City County Health Department. We post a lot of really useful information there. Um, you can visit our Health Department COVID-19 um, webpage, which is missoula.co slash cvirus for more information. And lastly, if you have any questions, please um, feel free to call 258-INFO, that's 406-258-INFO, 
and that is manned by people from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, and they can help answer any questions that you might have um, that I have not already covered or that might come up um, during the day that you just need to get an answer for. Um, so that's it for today. Thanks, everybody. Stay healthy. All right, so you got a kind of a sense of what's going on within the city of Missoula. Uh, of course, we're going to jump right back into city council meeting because this is the one that happened on March 23rd. Um, we didn't have a meeting the week this past week on the 30th uh, because it was the fifth Monday of the month, and a lot of what the city is doing is trying to limit their interactions and try to uh, uh, try to figure out how they're going to be running the operations of the city of Missoula and how uh, the city of Missoula will continue to serve the people of Missoula. And this is what Mayor John Engen had to say. Um, we're continuing to work with our partners both at the state and federal level. Again, as we march down a path toward trying to find ways to A, contain the illness um, and the spread of the illness, um, to deal with the consequences of those who are suffering from the illness and ensure that our hospital system is taken care of and in good shape. Uh, and, uh, and deal with uh, economic recovery. Um, I will tell you that I have been so impressed with the private sector um, and their willingness to close up shop, um, some of whom did it voluntarily and some who happily did it when uh, the health department order came down. Um, the work they're doing for this community at great personal sacrifice is tremendous. And the folks who are working at those places who are now displaced, um, we are doing everything we can to ensure um, that this disruption is one time and temporary and as painless as possible. Lots of moving parts every day. Your staff is working um, relentlessly to sort this. Um, and whether that's a first responder or uh, someone sorting out uh, budgets so that we can pay for emergent issues, um, everyone in between. So thank you all. Um, the term of art appears to be, we will get through this. So I will tell you once again that I believe that we will get through this. Um, it's a matter of time, patience, commitment, and effort, and all of those things are afoot here in the city of Missoula. So far, uh, one of the things that the city has done is postponed a lot of their public hearings about uh, different things that are coming up and trying to avoid, because one of the big things that the city was talking about was a Tool Avenue rezoning where they're going to allow more commercial businesses to pop up near the uh, Tool Avenue area, and a lot of people in the neighborhood were very concerned about that, so a lot of people were speaking against that. Um, so what they wanted to do was they wanted to push that a little bit further up, past the lines to avoid having a large amounts of people within the city council chambers, but annexing, uh, annexing is something that the city also does, and right now they were talking a little bit more. I, I had a whole thing about it, but it wasn't really timely with what's going on with the city of Missoula, so we're talking, I'll just give a little uh, spiel, is that the city did approve of an annexation of a, uh, um, a business complex uh, rezoning kind of um, deal where uh, just off of reserve, if you go actually past a little bit past reserve, you're outside the city of Missoula limits, which is kind of funny because there's also many city limits that go as far as the airport now. But this particular spot was just off of a reserve across from uh, Rosars behind the Holiday Gas Station is that they're annexing that particular zone. So it can be turned into a 42 unit complex, two buildings with 21 units each. And that's one of the things that they wanted to kind of do, which they were approved by the city of Missoula to uh, build more uh, units, more... Uh, uh, apartments and stuff like that as well. All right, moving on, uh, Stacey Anderson, uh, she is a city council member. She talks small business support and how you can help them. Every time you to take out, you're giving a little micro loan to that business. So think about the ones you would be the saddest to see if they didn't reopen their doors and try to do everything you can to support them. I know that they are trying to go above and beyond to be as safe as they can and try to preserve um, and still keep their um, takeout going or um, fact and fiction and Shakespeare and Company are still open so uh, for all those people who are home with a little extra time support the local businesses and get some books I called uh, Morgan Roth uh, music today to order some sheet music because I'm gonna try to relearn piano with some free time and instead of ordering on Amazon I called them and said hey this is what I'm looking for give me your book recommendations and I'll pay online and they were more than happy to do that so just um, 
social distance and stay at home you can, but um, do try to support those little bus- those businesses that make Missoula the unique, amazing place to live um, because they need us now more than ever. So thanks so much. And of course, you know, she was saying is like micro loans is a big uh, deal. Um, it's just like taking, getting takeout. You know, you order online. There's some curbside um, assistance. Um, if you haven't been to a couple of the places in the town, um, one drive through has also uh, asked you that when you prepay, you go to the window and then they tell you to, uh, to show you their number. Uh, they give you a number and uh, you show them the number and then they put the... Uh, the uh, takeout on a table and there's very little to no interaction that you have with uh, uh, the service industry workers as well. Some places have just kind of make it and then they hand it to you. That's perfectly fine. Uh, Many places are working really hard to wash their hands and keep that going on moving forward. Um, And one of the big things that are happening as well is that the city of Missoula is deciding to suspend a lot of their committee meetings. And here's Mayor John Engen talking a little bit more about suspending some of the committee meetings moving forward. What we will do is, um, through our referral process, provide uh, provide a list of those contracts that will be administratively approved. Um, those will be before you. Um, you will be able to see those before Monday evening at a council meeting. If you care to call out any of those contracts for review, which you're certainly welcome to do, um, or if you'd like any of those to be considered by the body, Um, This resolution allows uh, individual council members to do that as a function of prerogative. Um, Otherwise, I will continue to execute those contracts the way I execute contracts under $25,000. This expires uh, at the end of April. Um, I am actually hoping that it won't need to go that long, but we will see. We'll start to understand our processes much better here in the coming days, and the need for this resolution may become moot. Um, But in the meantime, it uh, should save us some time, uh, temper risk, uh, make us a little more efficient, and create capacity. So that... Of course, in in the meantime, Monday city council meetings will uh, possibly meet and continue through Mondays. Um, you can always check online at their city website, ci.missoula.mt.us, for more information as well. Um, the uh, One of the things that the city is trying to do is trying to limit their interactions and try to figure out how they can actually uh, still run the city without having to have uh, meetings and figure out quorums. And so um, one of the things that um, they try, they're trying to do is to try to give additional power to the mayor of Missoula. These are temporary powers that they're going to give to the city of, of Missoula, the mayor, so he can move forward with uh, a couple of the claims, a couple of things, and also they're also pushing the uh, public hearings. So a lot of this is to approve claims and let the, uh, the mayor of Missoula and all of his staff work on uh, uh, proposing and passing a lot of these claims and bills and stuff that they have to pay as well. Um, so this is a uh, city council city councilor Gwen Jones is responding to the additional powers that are going to the city, to the mayor of Missoula, and this is what she had to say. Eliminate a lot of the housekeeping business that, for the most part, we do. Um, but a bigger issue for me also is getting these contracts out the door so that we are lining up business for this summer so that we can keep people employed. And I think it's really important to keep that wheel turning because a lot of jobs are not going to be around this summer. So the more that we as government can keep that money that we normally would be spending flowing into the economy, I think it's really, really crucial. So this will keep that pace up and we won't lose a beat and I'm happy to support it. Of course, the review process will be done outside the chambers and you can always look this up on the city's website. Um, You could... um, of course, um, nationally, Congress is also still meeting. There's a lot of interesting things that are happening as well, even within Congress, because there's been a couple of uh, congressmen as well who've been tested positive for COVID-19 uh, as well. So one of the things is the dangers of having um, public policy being approved is that you need to have public in there. And that's one of the things that is going on in social distancing. Uh, Jesse Ramos agrees with giving additional powers to the mayor, but he also believes that he's not giving up anything in the process. And this is what Jesse Ramos had to say. Um, from what I understand, the Senate is facing the same thing, where essentially you need a quorum to do business, and what counts as a quorum and what doesn't. Um, essentially, you all have to be present in the same place in order to have a quorum, and you're not in the same place if you're on different conference phones. So 
Um, we're trying to work through <coughs> some outdated laws, and I think that this is a, a very innovative way uh, to do business, and, and I appreciate the mayor um, reaching out to me and, and, and coming up with um, this kind of exception to it, this, this sideboard on it. So everything is fine. Your liberty remains intact, and at the end of the day, we're just going to be safer as a community, I think, over this. Of course, um, as Jesse Ramos was saying, is that this may actually open the doors of figuring out how to have quorums without the necess necessity of having people in the room. Of course, you know, it's always important to have the back and forth and be able to have uh, people there to uh, say what they need to say. But of course, you know, the city is asking that um, that their city council members uh, go online, check their email, reply if they have any concerns with anything that's coming up that needs to be approved. They can do it online, and that's some of the things that are going to do, be doing through the committee meetings and try to tighten this up a little bit. But, of course, this will only last until mid to late April. Um, and, of course, they're trying to follow the state uh, law, which uh, put that man another mandate on closing schools and other uh, kind of, like, major facilities. Uh, but, of course, you know, a couple major things uh, are still going on. But uh, until April 10th is the typical deadline. Um if you're concerned about the city of Missoula or you have anything to say about any upcoming policies or any claims that uh, got you uh, riled up, you can always contact them at the city's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. Again, that is ci for city, dot Missoula, dot mt for Montana, dot US, United States. Uh, of course, this place, you can find out more information, but you can always call the city of Missoula at 406-552-6000. So uh, I have another video I'm going to show you guys, and then I'm going to show, and then I'm going to start wrapping up my show and kind of tell you this and that what's going on um, as well with MCAT uh, right after this fun video uh, dubbing stuff. Cause I'm running on empty. Oh, oh! Did you guys just hear me singing? That's kind of awkward. What do you think? I don't think you're allowed to sing that oh, song. Oh, what do you know? I'm going inside. I got to use the bathroom. Hurry, you fool! We gotta cover this up! Hmm, my Bluetooth seems to be connecting to a weird device around here. Hmm, maybe I should go check it out. Oh no, if he finds my secret hideout, we'll be ruined! Come on, let's get out of here! Sir, do you think about setting up an elevator? Uh, it's so difficult. Uh. Alright, let's see what we got here. Uh oh. Hmm, the signal seems to get stronger around here. Let's see if I could find any kind of secret doors or secret contraptions. Ooh, Winfred, you need to close the brick wall. Huh? Go, close okay, it. Okay, I guess. Uh, just leave me alone. Ah, seem to be getting closer. Closer. Uh, Winston, do this. Winston, do that. Uh, I'm always out of breath. I just can't keep up with this guy. All right, I will be the WWE champion. Uh, maybe next time. All right. I wish you'd just let me close it manually. Ah, stupid thing. I always gotta go for the update. This doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Perhaps maybe I could actually just look through it the old-fashioned way. Ah, the drawer. Might have some stuff in Winston, here. Winston, it's sure. now or never. We know. gotta activate the robot! Come on now! Maybe it's in this drawer. Uh, it's never in the second place you look. Oh, fine. Just ignore me. I'll find love over here. <laughs> oh, do I hear evil laughing? I told you for the last time. I gotta find my lover. He, I just need to find him. That's you why know we're where here, he is. I need to find him. Oh. It's not safe to go inside, ma'am. What do you mean it's not safe? Now, don't you, you argue with me. You're supposed house. to be the damsel in distress in the third act. Oh, no, Fine, I'll just milk every scene I'm in. Well, might as well give up after two locations. Hmm, did I tie in the toilet paper? Hmm, what's the sound coming from? Oh, oh no! Robot Whoa, man. I did not see this coming. Whoa, I just went into Prepare a random to mansion. I, uh, please, uh, whoa. Whoa. I didn't know this day was going to get this exciting. I just realized bullets can't destroy me. <laughs> Prepare for unwanted cuddling. Oh, jeez. Oh, whoa. Come here, oh, big boy. Geez, I'm no. going to show you no, how I love. Nice try. I am made of metal. Please don't. Ooh, I wonder if this is going to impress Shania Twain. Because that doesn't impress me much. Haha, <laughs> yes. All right, let's don't forget about exactly me. I'm in this movie, too. 
I just realized the door's open. And the robot's still in the room and people are coming in. Oh, come on, robot. It's time to get going. Time to leave. No, no. I gotta get out of here. Must cover up the murder. Oh, don't have enough time to bury body. All right, all right, I'm coming. Please, don't be mad. I think I hear a robot. I just want to move. Mm. Aha! I did. <laughs> you did what? Oh, no! <laughs> Get out of the way. Harold, Harold, are you alive, Harold? No, he's dead. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so that was <laughs> that was dubbing stuff. Of course, I made that a couple weeks ago. I didn't make a new one this week, but I didn't actually show it on my morning show because uh, I was planning on doing the morning show the the date I was doing that. So we're talking a little bit more about MCAT. So MCAT, uh, as we are transitioning out of our old facility, we will be moving into the new library. And part of that is because of this uh, pandemic that's happening within the United States is that we closed MCAT. Uh, we also, uh, uh, one of the things that we did as well is that we canceled our spring camp and we had about 12, 13 kids that were signed up. So if you are a parent of one of those camps as well and, um, and are still need that refund, we, we, we definitely, um, implore you that you call MCAT 542-6228, other, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. If you are concerned about, like, anything where you're, uh, um, like, even our, even our Saturday drop-ins are closed right now because of what's happening, but also as the uh, things start slowing down, you might be wondering if MCAT's going to be reopened again after when everything else is open. That is a no, because uh, one of the things that MCAT is doing is, as we're transitioning out of MCAT, once the... Uh, Basically, the paint dries on this uh, uh, COVID uh, pandemic that's going on, as well as that MCAT will be in the process of moving out of our location on the 500 North Higgins Avenue as we move into the new library. And the move-in is going to happen May 15th. Um, but of course, you know, the official opening is going to be on June 15th with the grand opening happening about July 15th. Uh, but of course, they want to have, uh, you know, they want to iron out the details, make sure everything's in and ready to go, but the official move-in date is May 15th, which doesn't mean it's going to be open. The library is going to close, I believe, their top floor, um, and MCAT, by then, with everything that's happening, MCAT's already been getting rid of a lot of stuff. Our, the lights in the studio are completely gone, so uh, even if I did go to the studio, I'd have to set up uh, stand lights to... Uh, do the show and hear and uh, do that kind of stuff. So that's just kind of the, the, the kind of the brass hacks and kind of what's happening within the city of Missoula. But I wanted to thank you guys for joining me here in my house, here in one of my, uh, my office space as well. Um, but, um, if you want more information, you can go to MCAT.org. Um, you can even call MCAT 542-6228 for any programming details. Uh, Lori works in the mornings, and Joel still works administratively in the afternoons. So we are also taking t uh, precautions to distance ourselves from each other. And, of course, I want to give a shout-out to Ron Scholl, who's been um, giving um, some couple of those updates from the uh, county courthouse steps. Um, he did a couple of them with uh, Josh Schlotnick, uh, County Commissioner Josh Schlotnick, and uh, City of Missoula Mayor John Angen a couple times uh, the last couple weeks. So he's keeping on doing that. Um, so i uh, give, give a, a shout out to him. Uh, of course, you know, one of the things that NMCAT tried to do is that we try to continue on doing those a uh, couple of those uh, uh, candidates forums. And we try to figure out maybe that we could host them and do like a live stream. And there's a lot of programs that are on MCAT as well because there's the Democratic candidate for the Attorney General of the State of Montana that's airing on MCAT as well. So there's a lot of politics happening. Uh, of course, everything's kind of slowed down and everything's kind of stopped and nobody's really uh, canvassing or doing any kind of major uh, out uh, press the flesh kind of deal and so uh, that's one of the things that are uh, kind of like delayed right now as we uh, basically batten that on the hatches for this so I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning um, I, and, and as per usual my uh, long rambling endings will end nicely so for Wake Up Missoula I'm Skyrath I want to thank you guys for joining me and have a wonderful but a safe uh, uh, isolating experience <laughs> alright see ya